What's up everybody? So after a week of live streams, we're back to regular programming. We're going to get into creating users for the to-do app and we're gonna do it using Firestore and GetX. So let's get into it. So first thing you need is a user model. Gonna have user.dart and then class users. Or if you add a GetX snippets extension, all you have to do is get model type that out and then you can rename this to user model we're going to change the id to a string we're going to add another field for email and then instead of having these we're going to do from document snapshot then we can set id doc dot document id name doc name and email back email so here we have our user model created next thing is we need to implement our user controller so inside our user controller we need an observable user model it's basically this model that we have but we want that information to be observable so you do that by rx user model and we can call it user model and create a user model with nothing and make it observable. Then we need a way to access this. Get user model, get user, user model dot current value. And we're also going to add a setter for it. So this way we'll be able to set the value for our user model and be able to observe it from anywhere in the app. And then the last function we're gonna add is to just clear it. So there we go, we got our controller all set up. You'll notice we're not calling Firestore from anywhere over here. That's because I like to separate it even more. So in our services, we're gonna add a database file. Now this is just my personal preference I don't think there's anything wrong with doing the actual Firebase things in here. But let's say we want to get the user and set the user in Firebase. What if we want to create a new user from multiple places in the code? You could just keep it all within the user controller and that might be a good architecture. But with the database, it's even more separated out. And you could have all your database interfaces defined in one place. So here we need a Firestore instance. And we will have two functions. It's going to be create new user and get user. To create a user, we need all the user model information. And to retrieve a user, we just need their UID. So then, just like we normally do, wrap it in a try catch and await the database and write to the user collection into a document that goes with the UID and set data to the provided data. And if no exceptions happen, then we will return true. If an exception happens, then we return false. And then similar thing to get user, we go to the users collection, we find the document with the UID, and we just get that data. And with that document, we can return a user model from document snapshot and pass in the document that we have. So you notice here I did rethrow. So basically it just throws the exception again. We, we could do the same thing up here, but we can customize it ourselves if we just return false. So there we go. All the setup is done for the Firestore side of things. Now we just need to use it and implement it within our app. So where are we gonna create the user and get the user? That will be done in our auth controller. So if you remember our auth controller has our Firebase user authentication. We have create user, login, and sign out. So after we create a user in the authentication part of Firebase, we want to also create a user in Firestore. We do this by defining a user model. The ID for this model will be retrieved from our auth result. The name is passed into this function already. Email is also passed into the function. Then once we have the user defined, we can create it in Firestore. So we will await database 
create new user and we'll pass in our user model that it takes in. And if you remember, this function returns a Boolean. So we could just do a quick check. User created successfully. And then we could do get dot find our user controller and set the user to the user we created. And then we will do a get back to pop off the signup screen and go back to the root. So that's creating the user, then logging the user in is just as simple. We do get.find the user controller and set our user field to the user return from the database. So auth result user UID. We just have to pass in the UID. Our database finds it and adds it into our user controller. And last quick thing, get.find user controller and clear it whenever we signed out. Okay, so that should work. Whenever we go into the root widget, we wanna initialize our user controller here. And we do that by just a simple get put user controller and just put a new instance of it. So there we go, now our app should run and we should be able to create users and log in users in Firebase. So now if we go into the app, we sign up, full name, we'll just do the first part, tadasp at gmail.com, password one, two, three, four, five, six, sign up. We'll see, it takes us to the home screen and we can check our database and we will see users collection with tadasp at gmail and name Tadis. So one last thing, let's display it on the actual home screen. So we'll just do a simple observable above the column and we'll observe the user controller. And we can just return a simple text with the user and name. And there we go, Tadas. And we can return email if we want to. And then if we sign out, logging in should work as well. You saw that little red flash before. That's because when we log in, we do our auth result and we get the authentication set, which updates our Firebase stream. And then you see the root listens to that and then moves us to the login screen. But that happens before we actually get the user from the database. So there's multiple ways to fix it. Probably the most efficient way is to not move to the login screen before you get the user. Or you could do something simple where you just check if user that email does not equal no, you return the email. Otherwise, return loading. So now if we sign out and log in. Just see there's no red flash. So that's it. That's how we're gonna create users for our to-do app. I think this video explains how to use Firestore with GetX a little bit. If you have any improvements, let me know in the comments. And this code will be on GitHub, so feel free to check it out. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.